Henry Bernstein, an emeritus professor of development studies at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. He was the editor of JPS for 15 years, uh, from 1985 to 2000 with Terence Byers. He was the co-founding editor uh, of another great journal, the Journal of Agrarian Change in 2001, again with Terence Byers, and he's an emeritus editor there. He's the author of many, many great things, including Capitalism and Agriculture, which kicked off the uh, initiatives in critical agrarian studies. I looked at some of the food sovereignty literature, not all of it, because it's very wide-ranging, it's very diverse, as I indicated, and that's demonstrated in the richness and variety of the papers uh, for this conference. But I've noticed certain things, and one of them is that a lot of the arguments for food sovereignty are at least illustrated, sometimes premised on what I would call emblematic instances of other ways of farming than corporate industrialized agriculture. And it seemed to me, at least in the literature I looked at, there are two kinds of emblematic instance, which interestingly reproduce this north-south divide, even though some people here, notably Jan Dower, whose work I always read with great interest, have tried to suggest and argue ways of transcending such divides, as indeed in this concept of the new the new peasantries. And one kind of emblematic instance is of farmers in the south, certain types of farmers, who are, who are not surplus producers. That is, that their ambitions and their energies and their ingenuity, whatever it might be, is basically directed to feeding themselves and their families. I have no problem with that, um, except it doesn't help us address the question of how farmers like that are going to feed the rest of the world's population. And I think the population question is extremely important, as Jim Scott indicated this morning, and one can try to understand it and address it without falling into Malthusian uh, positions, which uh, De Schutter warned us against. Um, but, in fact, you know, the population question is very central, for example, to the work of Joan martinez Allier, who is one of the founders of ecological economics. So, farmers, many of these instances are from Central American highlands and uh, uh, arid parts of West Africa. Then, a second emblematic instance is those who are actively involved in commodity production, commodity relations and markets, including the new peasants, uh, as, as Jan Dower um, calls them. And they may find ways of trying to negotiate their positions as, as commodity producers and the pressures on them, both in terms of the techniques they use, more rather than less agroecological, and to try to achieve some element of relative autonomy um, within markets. And again, I understand this, I can see this happening, and it seems to me that farmers of that kind, often called middle farmers in the food sovereignty literature, um, and they're not poor farmers, it seems to me that there, there is more potential uh, to pr produce the surpluses uh, that are required by all those in the world's population who don't farm, who don't produce their own food. Many of them rural. It's not just a question of urban populations. Um, but unlike Jan Dauer, I don't see that their search for room for maneuver, for negotiating the way they are commodity producers, is actually all that different in principle from what other kinds of commodity producers do. They all seek to find advantages in markets and so on. So. Um, Seven minutes has sped by, at least for me, maybe not for you, but I've tried to use the time to uh, lay down some lines of provocation that might feed into our, uh, our debates during this conference. Sorry. Awesome. Oh, no, that was great. Thank, thanks. Yeah.